Hi, welcome back to the Cozy Sound channel. I recently dug out my old Casio DH100, can you see that with it? It's all a bit, yeah. My old Casio DH100 digital horn with MIDI. Whoa, I've not played this thing for years. Um, it's been stuck at the back of the wardrobe doing nothing. Fortunately, I didn't remember to take the batteries out of it before I stashed it away, so that wasn't a problem. I, this is this is the beast itself. Um, the, like I say, I took the batteries out, so there's no leakage, so the battery compartment was fine. So I thought, great, let's turn it on and see what happens. And then it got a little bit interesting. I'm going to demonstrate. So if I uh, turn it on, I've not got it on breath control, which means I can just play the keys. So if I press a key, you should hear a nice, sweet note. Exactly what you call a nice sweet sax sound. That damn thing's howling like a banshee. However, quick search of the wibbly wobbly web, and guess what? There's lots of uh, items on there that show you exactly how to fix it. Um, it should be relatively easy. Apparently, it's uh, a well known fault on a, a dodgy capacitor that tends to break down over time, and a simple replacement should fix it. So, I'm going to have a go at fixing my DH100 Casio digital MIDI horn thingy what's it do da and see whether I can actually make it playable again. Here we have the DH100 on the operating table. So in order to get at its innards we need to take the case apart. So let's let's have a go at that. We'll open the battery compartment first. One of those big screws that you open up with uh, with a penny. <laughs> Great. I've already taken the batteries out. The reason we do that is there is actually a, a screw inside the battery case which we need to remove. So uh, we'll undo the screws. Whoa. There's, what is it? There's one, two, three, four, five, just six screws. I've already uh, removed the, the mouthpiece from this end here. I'm uh, putting the screws in a, in a lid off a small jar. That's, uh, there you go, like that. That's, uh, the number of times that I've taken things apart, put all the screws nice and safe, only to find that one is on the floor somewhere. This is really awkward. This, this here, very very deep hole. So it's it's good that I'm using the uh, small slim screwdriver to get it out. There's a way of getting them back in, which I'll show you uh, when I do put, come to put the case back together. That uh, there's a little little trick you can use. Okay, let's spin it round this way. That's uh, which way are we going? No. Sit it like that. There we go. And so we we see the innards. Um, this is. Not to put too fine a point on it, it's a spit tube, it's where the moisture from the breath runs down and dribbles out the bottom of the uh, instrument. Anybody who's played uh, things like woodwind or brass before will uh, be very familiar with, with the dribbly bits of being a musician. So anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on. Got a speaker in the back there, we've got kind of the thing, the board that picks up all the keys um, and that but the main two there's, there's two main boards here now according to the online information this top board which I just dropped the screw in the bottom there now but never mind we'll get that in a minute if I remove the the top board
turn it over we get some light on this now there we go these are the two capacitors at the end of the board where the problems generally lie now it says on the instructions that it's capacitor C39 and this one here is labelled C39 I don't know whether I can uh, get the camera a little bit closer um, but when you do move in close I'm actually I'm taking a photograph of this um, so that you can actually see in detail what's going on but it's a breakdown of this electrolytic capacitor here that is causing all the problems that's the making it squeal like a banshee and if we look close in we can see the evidence for what's happening so if we look at the two capacitors there now in, in, in this still photograph I've labelled it up you can see that C40 which is the good capacitor you can see a nice shiny blob of solder at the foot of that capacitor and if you look at the foot of C39 it's got this kind of uh, uh, crunchy gritty kind of effect to it and it's quite dull that is evidence that the capacitor has broken down and has leaked out and generally messed up the uh, the solder pad and um, of course it also means the capacitor itself has broken down so that's a capacitor we need to replace this is a 33 microfarad capacitor I haven't got a 33 so I'm going to attempt to put in a 47 microfarad electrolytic and people have done that before and they say it works so we'll find out won't we but yeah let's move in a little closer to this now and with with the uh, the video and you can see how I go about trying to take this one out and put the new one in here we have the board a little closer now um, what I'm going to do I'm going to clean up around the bottom of the capacitor and see whether there's I can actually melt and remove some of the solder um, I think there's probably surface mount not through hole um, just about everything on here is surface mount what I'm going to clean this up with um, can we see this um, this is oh yeah, that's better a fiberglass pencil if I twiddle the end you can see it's kind of white stuff poking out the end there that white stuff is lots of little uh, fibers of fiberglass and it's great for cleaning contacts so I'm going to have a go at using this to clean up around the bottom of the offending capacitor and see what happens Get a little bit more out I'm trying to expose some of the solder so I can actually get soldering lining on it <laughs> side um, it's pretty firm on there okay what I'm going to try and do you know, clean it up a little bit I can actually see a bit of a contact um, I'm going to warm the soldering iron up and see whether we can actually remove any of it I now have a, <coughs> a warm soldering iron not well, hot soldering iron uh, so I'm going to try and start by at the base of this capacitor where I've just cleaned up some of the mess see if I can desolder that and start to move the capacitor away thing is this capacitor is dead so we're not trying to save the component we're just trying to remove it so don't have to be overly gentle with it let's see if we can get the solder to actually start to melt first Smelling a little hot. I don't want to go. One of the tricks that you can try, if if you can't get 
the solder that's there to melt. And it sounds counterproductive, but if you take some solder with you, it can quite often encourage the solder that's there to actually give up. I'm going to scream while I burn myself here. Ah, there we go. That was easier than I thought it was going to be. Ah. But it is still quite a mess. Get the old pen back out again. Now I have noticed that although I can try and solder my capacitor onto these two existing pads, if that fails, there's actually some through holes here and this one on to point with this one on this side there's a tiny track you'll not see it from this video uh, but there's a tiny track that goes to the positive terminal which is nicely marked up uh, which leaves this broader track there which goes through the negative terminal which goes to the negative terminal of this capacitor so I can either kind of try and get these to accept the solder or if that fails I can do some through track soldering, but through board soldering. Let's see if I can melt some solder onto these pads first and clean these, get these to kind of look like the Yeah, well that's taking some solder. And that's taking some solder. So what I might be able to do is lay my capacitor because I don't I don't want the capacitor standing up too high. I kind of want to lay it flat if I can. Um, I should have got the capacitor out before I started. <laughs> Forty-seven microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And of course electrolytics are polarized, there is a positive and a negative. So if you can see there one leg is longer than the other. The long leg is the positive leg. Um, but you don't need to rely on the legs if the legs have been cut off because if you look on the cam we've got one side of the can is labelled with negative which is the short leg so we know which way around it's going to go so if I'm going to put this on the board here I kind of want it to sit like that with the negative leg to the negative side and the long leg positive to this side. If I uh, stand it up slightly I've got to get it to sit like that. Yeah that, that should work. Another trick that I use with when I'm solding other boards to try and hold things in place electrician's tape. And there we go. Uh, okay. See whether I can solder this down. Do you know what? The electrician tape was a bad idea. I'm just going to hold it. 
I also think I'm going to have to bridge it. Right. Well, that's on on that side. And that's on on that side. So if I just trim the ends off that now. Well, that should be the fix. That's the, uh, the surgery done. What I need to do now is put it back together and see whether it works. Now, the, the trick, this is it, this is the trick for getting a small screw down a deep hole without losing it. A little bit of white type, probably a little bit too much, you only need a tiny tiny amount, a little bit of white type in the head of the screw which allows you to stick it to your screwdriver which then allows you to feed it down the hole until you feel it drop into the slot and you can tighten it up and there's a white tack still on the end of the screwdriver and there we go, that's that back together so, what I need to do now is to put some batteries in it and see whether it squeals like a banshee or sings like an angel. The horn takes five AA batteries, so let's slot those in, getting the polarity right. And we're back on. Penny screw. Big moment. Breath control turned off and power on. Well, it powers up. Whoa. And my banshee screaming horn is cured. So let's stick the breath controller on it and have a little play. Well, it looks like we've got ourselves a, a working DH100 horn. So I've, I've just switched. I'm going to go in through the mixer, that's all. There's no effects or anything. Um, and yeah, let's listen to what the sounds are. So it should be on saxophone. And I've got breath turn on this time. Portamento. Um, so, um, where's the tone switch? It's years since I've played this thing. So that was sax.
trumpet. No, I don't really see much difference. Synth read, this should be interesting. heavy on the vibrato but and then flute changes the ranges as you go through the uh, tones and um, should be back to sax now okay yeah limited fun but a bit limited however remember this is a digital horn with MIDI right now the MIDI on it is down here it's uh, your classic five pinned in style MIDI so what I've got I've got an M audio interface which I don't know whether we can get it that thing I'm sorry it's tiny and poking in the bottom but it basically what it does it takes um, the classic style uh, MIDI and converts it into USB MIDI so you can plug it into your computer and what I have running on my computer at the moment is it's my Linux laptop running the Yoshimi Linux synth and I think the voice I've got selected is from the Will Godfrey collection Will Godfrey great block I met, I met Will Godfrey at the um, um, synth fest last last year um, and in fact last year it was the 10th anniversary of this Yoshimi synth but it's a great little software synth runs under Linux um, if you've not seen it before and you get a chance to check it out check it out it's it's mind-bending you can go in on a, a really simple interface and uh, kind of it, it makes it easily and quickly and readily accessible but you can go down through the layers and the amount of editing you can do is phenomenal um, and as far as I understand it's still in development so it's not dead yet um, anyway so right so what I should have now is you should hear the sax, the DH100 sax coming through, but also it should now be controlling via the MIDI interface the Yoshimi synth. So let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't think I've got the voice that I thought I had. Let's see what I can get back to Voyager again. This is nice.
try a different uh, try it off it should be on flute now no it's not there we go that's flute and let's try a different voice um have we got something more like uh Back it up with an organ. Oops. And yes, Portamento works. sounds you can kind of um, so if I'm blowing it gently blow a bit harder it's a bit sketchy the amount of breath control you can get working over MIDI because if you read um, the various uh, bits of information about this and how the breath control works it's not actually proper breath control MIDI or proper MIDI breath control whichever way around um, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a fudge but hey you know this is an old instrument it, it really didn't cost very much money when it came out and at the time there wasn't lots of clever MIDI controllers uh, and yeah for what it is well worth the effort in fixing it because to be honest with you it wasn't that difficult after all bye for now stay safe and tune in next time